Simple sentences. All right, here's the deal. Simple writing style. Again, if you want to be clear, if you want to be efficient, if you want to be correct, simple sentences are the way to go. Simple sentences are the way to go. And here's what they are for a refresher. The agent ran up the hill. What's the uh, action in that sentence, the agent ran up the hill? Sorry, I couldn't hear you over the sound of the screen rolling up. What's the action? Ran. Ran? Just ran? That's it? Ran up. How many people vote for just ran? Just that word? You're going to have to vote, by the way. So. What was the question? Well, some people said rent. For what? For what's the action. OK. And then some people, at my prompting, were like, well, maybe ran up. So it's, here's the question. Uh, really, with this, we got two options for what to write on the grammar worksheet. Just the word ran, or the whole phrase ran up. Mm -hmm. You're going to pick ran. How many people are going to write down ran, just the word? Most people by a little bit of hair. How many people are going to write down ran up? Why are you going to write down ran up? Why the whole phrase? Because the up is the hill is not the object. Yeah, where else are you going to? I mean, yeah, let's look at it that way. What's the object? The hill. The hill. Is there anyone that's going to write just hill for the object? That's what you're going to do? No. You're going to drop the D? Is anybody going to drop the D and just write hill? You could, maybe. Or you could get into really complex prepositional phrase. Oh. Where's, the, where's the subject? The agent. The agent. So subject, object. Well, if we just write down ran for the action, where does this leave up? What's that? Prepositional, la, 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 or. Or you could say, well, I mean, it, it modifies ran, you know, ran down, ran across, ran up, ran over. It's like the complete thought of the run, right? Now, here's the thing, because I don't want to weird people out too much. Here's the thing. For the grammar worksheet, you can write whichever. I don't care. As far as like getting to be picky, like I want you, I, I demand that you think exactly like I do. As long as you can think complexly and successfully and clearly about grammar, that's all I care about. Okay. I will tell you though, for like a more sociological analysis of where does this divide come from, some people are like, oh, I think it's the whole phrase. Other people are like, no, I think it's just the word. I think it comes from what kind of grammar teacher you had in fourth grade. And I've done polling for this, so we're running a little bit behind, so I won't go through it in this detail. But in general, I've discovered that folks who describe like my grammar teacher was in their 60s and they were like really strict and they were old school and we diagram sentences and stuff like that, those folks generally say, nope, it's just the word, just the word, just the word. The rest of it is prepositional, something, something, something. It's, it's the verb, that's it. Because again, they're carrying that grammar teacher around in their head. That's what I was taught. Same, same thing. Same, but, we need diagram, but we need the diagram, stuff like that, yeah. So, how old was your grammar teacher? Um, Do you remember? Well, we had a different one for each. Mm. I went to private school until sixth grade. Did any of them like wear Birkenstocks and stuff? Probably. I learned that with two in my Yeah. And they just said, oh, it was like, I'm an adjective, like it's describing the action. Did anybody have like a sort of a hippy dippy trippy kind of grammar teacher? You know, Bert Socks, Lassa Granola, stuff like that. You, you did? Did you go to grade school in Texas? Yes. Really? Oh, that's interesting. And, but you're still the single word person? No. Oh, and you're more the whole phrase person? Yeah, because I mean, think about it sociologically. Hippy dippy trippy, you got the granola, you got the Bert No, let's think about the whole, let's think about the whole. Right? Let's think about the whole. <laughs> Versus like, no, it's, I mean, you know, not to be stereotypical, but I, 
uh, collected the stats informally over years on this. So here's my thing. I don't care what kind of grammar teacher you carry around in your head as long as it works for you. I can tell you from experience of doing a lot of editing myself, helping a lot of other people edit, I can tell you from experience that whole phrase people tend to, tend to, not always, but tend to be better at seeing editing possibilities in sentences and changing stuff around in sentences without dropping info. And it kind of makes sense, because especially when you get to a sentence like this, um, the fast and angry agent very quickly ran up the very big barren and rocky hill. What's the action in this sentence? Very quickly just up. ran? Still just ran? Quickly ran? Quickly ran up? Very quickly ran up? A whole phrase, kind of hippy-dippy-trippy, to be stereotypical, a person would say, oh, it's very quickly ran up. That's the whole story of the action. Right? If you're going to start moving stuff around in sentences, like let's make it passive, so stuff is going to, you know, things like that. If you're, if you're sort of always seeing the whole phrase, in my experience, again, you'll be less likely to like suddenly drop info or suddenly change meaning if you start moving subjects and actions and objects. So I'm not saying that whole phrase people are always better editors. I'm not saying that that's the correct way. I'm just saying that if you are a single word, like action, subject, object, person, understand that you want to be extra mindful when you're moving stuff around in sentences if you need to keep the same meaning and, and the same information, which is what I'm asking you to do every time you edit stuff on grammar worksheet, for example. So that's why I'm bringing it up. So on the sheet where it says like subject and all action. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so for this sentence, uh, if you just wrote ran, yeah, sure, that's fine. If you wrote ran up, sure. If you wrote quickly ran up, sure. If you wrote quickly ran, sure. If you wrote very quickly ran, sure. If you wrote very up, right? I don't, I don't think any grammar, any of your, you know, or quickly. You know what I mean? If you wrote very quickly ran up, it's fine. <coughs> and the same thing for objects. You know? Like uh, the very big barren and rocky hill. If you just wrote hill on the grammar worksheet, okay, fine. But understand that if you're editing, you want to be more mindful. Since you're not sort of processing this as part of the object, you're going to have to be extra mindful to like make sure that you, if that stuff moves around, you move it around carefully when you're editing. Or you could say rocky hill, or barren rocky hill, or big barren rocky hill, or that. You know. I would say. Very big barren and rocky hill, but um, that's because I try to see sentences like that because I've discovered that it helps me in editing to see the whole phrase and to always concentrate on the whole phrase. Is that helpful? Hopefully. Okay. So.